Track structure is probably the most important thing that you need to learn when you're just getting started out with DJing. It's the one thing that's going to make your life a whole lot easier and it's going to massively improve your understanding of DJing and mixing in general. A lot of people when they're just starting out can get a little bit disheartened or frustrated because they struggle to get tracks playing in time with each other or dropping at the right time that they want them to. Now, track structure plays a huge role in this and hopefully you'll have a few light bulb moments after getting a better understanding of it. What's going on guys? My name's Kayo and this video is going to be the first in a series of videos covering all the essential concepts behind DJing and giving you all the info that you need to get up and running and improve your skills when it comes to mixing drum and bass. If you're just starting out or even if you've been mixing for a little while, it's really important to go back to the basics and make sure you have a solid understanding of all these concepts. So with that in mind, let's go back to the start and get into it. Now, in general, the majority of electronic music, including drum and bass, is composed in 8 or 16 bar phrases, depending on the tempo of the track. A track's tempo is measured in beats per minute or BPM, and the tempo of drum and bass commonly sits around 174 beats per minute. Now, this will vary depending on the track and will usually be somewhere between 170 to 178 beats per minute. However, and this is an important note for those that are just getting started, drum and bass can also be produced at half time, so 87 BPM, and any tracks in this range will usually be around 85 to 89 beats per minute. You'll probably notice that a lot of tracks will show up in your DJ software as 87 beats per minute, even though some of them may have actually been produced at 174 beats per minute. You can change the range in which your software analyzes the BPM to avoid that, although it doesn't particularly matter too much. The main thing that you need to know is that these tracks will still play in time with each other as long as the BPM is the same, exactly half or exactly double. For example, two tracks playing at 87 BPM are going to play at the same speed as each other. Two tracks playing at 174 BPM will play at the same speed as well, obviously. A track at 85 BPM and one at 170 BPM will also play in time with each other. And one at 87 BPM and one at 174 BPM will still play in time with each other as well. And I'll show you an example of that later on. So now I'm just going to jump into a few slides so we can cover some of the basic concepts behind track structure. So first up, we've got beats, bars, and phrases. Now, beats, bars, and phrases are the main building blocks for any tune. The beginning or the end of each phrase is where you'll usually hear a noticeable change in the track and where new musical sounds or ideas will either be introduced or they'll be taken away. By understanding phrases and the structure of tracks, you'll have a much better idea of how to time your mixes and when you should introduce new tracks or fade out the track that's currently playing. So here we've got screenshots of two waveforms from Rekordbox and if you're using some sort of DJ software, you're likely going to be seeing a similar sort of waveform pop up each time you load a track. Now, both of these examples are one bar in length, although the top example is at 87 BPM and the bottom example is at 174 BPM. Now, I'm going to be showing you examples of these throughout so you can get an idea of the differences. So each little section here between these gray markers is a beat and Four beats make up one bar, which is the whole section here between the red markers. You'll notice that both of these examples are one bar in length, but the bottom example is half the size. And this is because 174 beats per minute is technically playing twice as fast as 87 BPM. So by the time one bar has played at 174 BPM, only half a bar would have played at 87 BPM. Now, I'll give you an example of how the drums are generally laid out in a basic drum and bass pattern, and I'll show you why both tracks will still play in time with each other, even though the BPM seems so far apart. So what we have here is a screenshot from Ableton of two separate, just very basic drum and bass drum patterns. You've got your kicks along the bottom rows here, you've got your snares along the middle row, and you've got your hi-hats along the top row. Once again, the top example is at 87 beats per minute and the bottom example is at 174 beats per minute. The 87 BPM example is only one bar in length while the 174 BPM example is two bars in length. 
But if you have a look at how the drum hits are laid out, you'll notice that they all line up with each other. You've got your kicks here, 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 and here. You've got your snares lining up here, 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 and here. And you've got your hi-hats lining up here, 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 and so on. So even though the bottom example is technically playing twice as fast as the top example, the drum hits are just spaced further apart, so the tracks will actually still play in time with each other. Now, I'll just quickly jump into Ableton and let you have a listen to that. So I've got the track tempo here set to 87 beats per minute. I've got two tracks here, both with the same basic drum and bass drum pattern. One of them is composed as if the track is going to be at 87 beats per minute, which is this top one. And the bottom one is the same drum beat, but it's composed as if the tempo was at 174 beats per minute. So I'll just give you a quick listen to the top example and you'll hear that it just sounds like a normal drum and bass track. Now, if I play this 174 BPM example at 87 beats per minute, you'll notice that it sounds like it's playing at half the speed. But now if I change the tempo of the track to 174 beats per minute, the 87 BPM example is going to sound like it's playing twice as fast. And the 174 BPM example is going to sound the same as the 87 BPM example did when the tempo of the track was set to 87 beats per minute. So I'll just give you a quick example of the 87 one again, and you'll see that it sounds the same. And now I'll just jump into Record Box to give you an example of two tracks playing together at the same time, one at 87 BPM and one at 174 BPM, and show you that they will still play in time with each other. So there you go, you can see that even though this track is technically playing at twice the speed, they still play in time with each other and it sounds as if it's just one track playing. Now I'm just going to jump back into the slides so we can talk about phrases. So this is what one phrase looks like at 87 BPM, this is what one phrase looks like at 174 BPM down the bottom. At 87 BPM, one phrase is 8 bars long. So you've still got your beats in between these gray little markers here. You've got your four beats make up the one bar. And then you have your eight bars making up the phrase, which is a total of 32 beats. At 174 BPM, one phrase is 16 bars long. So you've got your beats down here once again, four beats making up the bar. And then you've got your 16 bars across here making up the phrase, which is a total of 64 beats. Now, all of this talk about beats and bars might be a little bit confusing when you're just starting out. So something that I also recommend is learning the actual point in time when phrases will generally begin in a track. This can help you to gauge where you're sitting in a track and can help you with timing your mixes as well, especially if you haven't been counting the beats. As you can see, both of these waveforms have a different number of bars. This one is eight bars, while this one is 16 bars, but you'll notice that they're both 22 seconds long. So rather than trying to memorize two separate lots of numbers for the amount of bars at the different BPMs, you can just try to remember one lot of timings as new phrases are still going to start at the same time whether the track is at 87 BPM or 174 BPM. Now I've put together a table here of the timing so you have something to reference if you need. The right side of the table is the time within a track where a new phrase will start. In drum and bass, a phrase is 22 seconds long. Now that's if the BPM is at 87 or 174. So a new phrase will start at 22 seconds, 44 seconds, 1 minute and 6 seconds, 128, 150 and so on. The left side of the table is the halfway point between a phrase. So this is going to be 11 seconds after the start of each new phrase. So that will be at 11 seconds, 
33 seconds, 55 seconds, 117, 139, and so on. The reason I'm mentioning these half phrase times is because I tend to place the majority of my cues at the halfway point between a phrase rather than at the beginning of a new phrase. And I'll go into more detail on why I do that in another video later on when we're covering three deck mixing. Now, bear in mind that these times may vary slightly depending on the track. So for example, if a track has five seconds of atmospherics or something at the start without any beats, then the phrase might not start till a little bit later. So in this example, uh, the phrase would start at 27 seconds, 49 seconds, and so on. The timing may also slightly differ depending on the BPM of the track. So as the BPM moves further above or below 87 or 174 BPM, the length of each phrase will either increase or decrease as well. So those are just a couple of things to look out for, but generally most tracks will come close to matching these times. When I'm mixing, I'll usually just set all of my tracks to the same BPM, which is usually 87 or 174 BPM. And in that case, all of these timings will be the same. Doing that also reduces the need to think too much about what BPM you're at all the time. You know, each time you load a new track, all you need to do is just put it to the same BPM. But that's completely down to personal preference. It depends on what tempo you prefer to play at and also whether you want to increase or decrease the energy during your sets or your mixes. So now we'll go into the actual structure of tracks. This is a snapshot of the common lengths of each section within a track. And then down below, I've got a few color coded examples of what different track structures might look like. So in their simplest form, drum and bass tracks can be broken down into four sections. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to call these sections the intro, the first drop, breakdown, and the second drop, slash outro. So every track is going to start with an intro, which will typically be one to four phrases long. The intro is going to set the tone for the track, and then it will start building tension leading into the first drop. The first drop section is the impact. It's the main body of the track, and it's where all the energy is going to be introduced. In most tracks, this section is going to be three to five phrases long, and then it's going to taper off into the breakdown. The breakdown is just to give the track some space to breathe, let things calm down a little bit and then start building tension again. Breakdowns are generally going to be one to three phrases long. And then finally, the build from the breakdown is going to lead into your second drop. In some cases, this section will be exactly the same as the first drop section. In other cases, they might introduce new sounds or take the track in a different direction altogether. This last section will generally be three to five phrases long. And then it might have a bit of an outro in the last one or two phrases to wind things down. So these are just a few examples of what a track might look like when you're loading them up. I've labeled the four different sections here and the times at which each section will begin. In the first example, we've got a short two phrase intro, and then the first drop is starting at 44 seconds. This is going to go for three phrases before dropping into the breakdown. The breakdown is two phrases long, and then this will lead into the second drop, which lasts for three phrases in this example. The bottom two examples are both quite similar. The only difference is being that the intro in the middle example is three phrases long. Intro in the bottom example is four phrases long. The second drop section in the bottom example is five phrases long, while it's only four phrases long in the middle example. And then you've got your first drop section, which is four phrases long in both examples, and the breakdown is two phrases long in both examples. Now, these examples here are just waveforms taken from record box. They're the exact same structure as the color-coded examples that I've just shown you. You can clearly see the four basic sections in these examples. So you've got your intro section here, first drop section here, breakdown section here, and your second drop section here. In these RGB waveform displays, red represents the lows, which you can see quite obviously here when your drop starts. This is where all the bass kicks in. So that's represented by the reddish pinkish color. The green represents the mids, which you can see quite clearly in the intro and the breakdown sections. And then you've got your blue representing the highs, which you can see scattered throughout. 
And these examples can be quite helpful to gain an understanding of the different sections within a track and how long they generally go for. Now, this is going to be important when you actually get to mixing two tracks together because you're going to have to make sure that the tracks are in phrase with each other and that certain sections line up at the right time so that your mix will sound natural and cohesive. For example, you don't want the drop on the track that you're bringing in to start only a couple of beats or a couple of bars after the drop on the track that's already playing because they're not going to flow well with each other. The mix is going to sound a little bit unnatural and out of time because all of the new sections and the new sounds are going to be introduced at different times rather than in the ordinary structure of a track. I'm going to be making a whole other video on mixing, blending and fading, so we'll go into a lot more depth in that video. So we can break each of these four sections down a little bit further to get a feel for the typical flow of a track. This example is using a two phrase intro and breakdown with first drop and second drop sections that are both four phrases long. So these first little sections of the intro and the breakdown are going to be the calmest sections of the track. There's not going to be too much going on. Usually there'll just be a few pads and some atmospherics playing probably some hi-hats and maybe the start of a drum beat. Moving on from there, we've got these blue sections, which are the build-ups that are leading into your main drops. And this is where all of the energy will start increasing and the track will start building tension before the drop hits. Next, we've got the drop. So you've got your first main drop here and you've got your second main drop over here. Now these sections are going to have the biggest impact and generally will have the most energy within the track. As the track moves into this next phrase, it'll generally start easing off around the halfway point through the phrase, and then it will start building tension again, which will lead into a kind of a second drop within the section. Then in the last phrase of the section, the track will start easing off again, more elements will be taken away, and it'll drop off into the breakdown. From there on, it's going to follow a similar structure until the end of the track. You've got your build up again here, leading into the second main drop, this is going to continue on, probably ease off a little bit and then build again into this second drop within this section. And then it's just going to tail off towards the end of the track. Knowing these different types of phrases is going to help you a lot when it comes to actually mixing tracks together. Now we'll cover this in a lot more detail in the mixing video as well. And I'll show you guys some of the best ways to line up these phrases to create mixes that flow really well. So I just wanted to jump into a quick summary of everything that we've covered today on track structure. The tempo of drum and bass is generally between 85 to 89 BPM or 170 to 178 BPM. Tracks are going to play at the same speed if the BPM is the same, exactly half or exactly double. Tracks typically consist of four sections. You've got your intro, your first drop, your breakdown and your second drop or outro. Tracks are made up of phrases. In drum and bass, one phrase is 22 seconds long. At 87 BPM, one phrase is equal to eight bars, which is 32 beats. At 174 BPM, one phrase is equal to 16 bars, which is 64 beats. And one bar equals four beats, regardless of the BPM. So that's about it for today, guys. In the next video, we're going to jump on the decks and go through the technique of beat matching so you can actually get to start mixing. But for now, if you got something out of this video and you'd like to see more in the future, then you know the drill. Just hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.